Welcome. You are about to take a journey to a place of the divine love within with Deborah Buffet on the Love by Intuition show. For the next hour, allow her to prepare you in becoming a magnet for a profound love infused relationship by identifying and focusing on solutions through love. Awaken the light within and let your essence shine. And now, here's Deborah Buffet on Love by Intuition, all part of the Dream Vision 7 radio network. Welcome, everyone. Bonjour, mes amis. And yes, here I am, Deborah Beauvais, founder and owner of the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. And if you're tuning in for the first time, we are a fully producing internet radio station with all the bells and whistles. You can listen to us anywhere in the world. You can ask Alexa. You can listen in your cars, wherever. And we... um, we're about up to 60 different podcast directories that our station is actually on. So you can listen to us just about anywhere, your favorite platform. Uh, and I'm really excited to have uh, my guest this evening uh, or tomorrow or the next day when you're listening to it. But this is live right now. And Bob is in the house. And our number here toll free is 833-220-1200. Again, 833-220-1200. And our guest is a a psychic medium as well as many other uh, modalities. Let me tell you about her. Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, she's an internationally renowned naturopathic doctor, energy healer, remote viewer, paranormal expert, and a consciousness teacher. She has an extensive client list. She's been working for 25 years, has worked with thousands of people. She was born with the ability to remote review and, I mean, remote view (laughs) and see people's auras and highly intuitive. She's many things, and we're going to get into all of what she does, and her um, new modality is uh, what she calls Frequency Master, and she teaches the frequencies uh, to others, and we're going to find out exactly what that is. Uh, So without further ado, Dr. Kimberly, come on into the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And so you've been everywhere. You've been on Nori's, um, you've interviewed. And, well, first I have to ask you, what, what is the secret to everything? Uh, it's so funny. Um, I used to say for many years that the secret to everything was frequency. And then I kind of went deeper, which will resonate kind of with your theme of the show, which really the secret to everything is you remembering who you are through all time and space and your glory and your power and, uh, you know, all of you. Yes. Yes. And isn't that the truth? I mean, we, we come here on earth and it's all about finding who we are, the truth of who we are. And then, Uh as I always say, then you really get to know what your, you know, what your specialty, what your uniqueness is, and then gathering Uh all that together and putting it into serving others. And a lot of times we're serving ourselves because it becomes our business. And um, then we were just talking about how important it is to balance self-care with business Mm -hmm. and serving. Um, So let me ask you, how do you do that? Because you're doing a lot of different modalities. You're teaching. uh, Mm -hmm. Tell us, how do you keep balance? Right. Well, I've made the choice to, um, as a lot of monks and mystics end up doing, to semi-isolate. I live near a large town, but I live about 20 minutes outside of town in the mountains on four acres of quartz crystal and so in the, in the middle of the woods. So um, that's very quiet and nurturing without a lot of hubbub. And I, I really see that as, you know, um, one of my strongest points of self-care, really. Um, I, I schedule my schedule so that if I need to take naps, I can take naps. Um, and so I can spend time with my family or my friends. Um, I try not to, you know, overbook myself. And, and like I shared with you before the call, there's even times where I'll stop doing interviews or I'll, 
stop teaching classes or mm-hmm. I'll stop doing one-on-ones. And I don't know that a lot of people do that or all three at the same time. And that's really becomes fun for me. <laughs> and then I do other things I like to do. You know, I like to learn new things. I'm learning how to watercolor paint, which I think is good to, you know, stretch your mind and learn new things. Um, I play the piano. I write fiction. So, you know, then I kind of, you know, I'm an herbalist. I love to garden. And so I spend time with my dogs and I hike. And there's just so many fun things to do other than work, as you know. So yes. I, I try to, you know, rotate that. But I do go through intensive periods, which you caught me in, <laughs> where <laughs> I'm working really, really hard. And, and you know, um, and then I give myself a break. So that's kind of how I do it. But everybody has their own, you know, how do you, how do you do that? <laughs> so, <bro? laughs> well, I'm... I'm big on meditation, and I actually let it go some time ago, and I'm back to doing that. Uh, and like yourself, I'm I'm on four and a half acres in the woods, and there's a lot of trees, it. a lot of yeah. um, wildlife that come around. And just walking, we can't do that in the winter time, um, although some try. But walking outside in the grass with bare feet, it's like it's so regenerating. And those are the kinds of things, you know, really take, even if it's 15 minutes to meditate, whether it's inside, outside, uh, long baths, things of that sort, and hugs, hugging yourself. I don't know about you, (laughs) you can believe, but I actually hug myself, and and, uh, it actually feels good, and it's, it's supportive, it's soothing, and it just feeds into never feeling alone. Oh, I love that. I have my own method. I use a 10 pound weighted blanket, which feels like a hug and really calming oh. to the nervous system. So I kind of do that too. I also never wear shoes. So it's funny. You and I have a lot in common. Oh. Uh, it sounds like, and I love warm baths too. I, I take a bath almost every night. So there you go. Yes. Yes. And, and see, this is so important. And some, so, you know, when I was younger, I may not have taken that time um, as much when I had my girls and they were young, but uh, as we go along, we find out that that is the best tool to have is to, you know, self-serve yourself with all kinds of ways to to soothe and heal and regenerate. We It's so important to regenerate so you can continue on. But I wanted to ask you, with, are you still, with all that you're doing, well, let me ask you this. How did a naturopathic doctor become an expert in the paranormal? Oh, actually, it was reversed. It was how did a paranormal expert become a naturopathic doctor? Oh, really? Paranormal, yeah. The paranormal was, yeah, the paranormal was first due to my um, just crazy abilities, and then bringing them out in college. And when I brought them out in college, I attracted the attention of law enforcement, and then working with them as a psychic medium, as they were uh, developing their occult, um, experimenting with developing the occult and cult teams in the 80s and 90s when that was, like, really big. Not saying it's not big now, but they kind of were, you know, playing around with the use of, you know, anybody that could help them. And I thought it was really glamorous at the ripe old age of 2021 to be a medium for the police. And it is very traumatic not glamorous and very low pain, but it was, you know, invaluable experience as far as giving me confidence in real world application of abilities. And really, I just climbed up from there. And I, you know, have done a lot of house clearings and worked with a lot of paranormal teams, um, including, I don't know, you guys might or might not know, um, the Holzer Files, I was Shane Pittman's psychic medium for his team. Uh, so a lot of people that you guys know, um, my ex-fiance grew up with Zach Bagans of Ghost Adventures. So, yeah, a lot of connections with the paranormal world there. But, um, yeah, so really it was my own health problems that I had, despite being in the paranormal. The paranormal world is not really useful necessarily for health. That kind of led me to taste down. I didn't even know. It's hard for us to believe there wasn't really an Internet you know, except mm-hmm. the last, what, 20, 30 years, it wasn't really accessible. There was an internet, but not accessible to each home. 
so I'm really thankful that I was alive when, you know, we were able to have a computer in each home. And then, you know, I got on the web one day and I was like, you know, what are alternatives to all this medication and medicine the doctors are trying to give me? And I didn't even know there was such a thing. This sounds so dumb. Called alternative medicine. And I'm like, wow, there's other things you can do other than doctoring, you know, because the Western world is so, you know, thick in that compared to the Eastern world. And so it that led me to solving my own health problems and then helping others. And then my ex-husband said, if you're going to take, I had four little girls. And he said, if you're going to take time away from the family, you should make money. So then I started charging and I went back and got advanced degrees and uh, the rest is kind of history as far as that goes. Yes. And so now are you still doing clinical work with people or is it more of a focus of um, the frequency? Um, it's interesting because, as you know, we kind of gather things and put it in our basket along the way, and then we have this yes. beautiful plethora of tools to pull out depending on the situation. Like today, right before the show, I was just finishing up an animal scan of someone's dog and um, with the frequency technology I use. And, of course, it, even with animals, it's mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual, depending on your beliefs. I happen to believe that most animals have souls. I don't know your beliefs or your audience beliefs, but that's my belief. So we yes. do need to care for our animals almost, I, I would say, to the exact degree that we, um, you know, care for other human beings and, and even nature. I would, you know, extend that to plants and forests and, and other things as well. Um, right. I think we need to be, you know, value sentient life. But, um, yeah, so I always mix in in every scan um, even if somebody comes and says, is my husband cheating on me or or am I going to meet my soulmate or when am I going to meet my soulmate, even if they're more what we would consider timeline questions or psychic questions, they're going to get whatever I want to give them. <laughs> so I'm going to look at whatever their oversoul says. If, if their oversoul says they need D3K2 or minerals, I'm going to tell them that, you know, so and, and really I'm not telling them that. I, I'm saying they're oversold because we're frequency broadcasting towers. So they're really telling me, but they don't have the technology or the 30 years experience. So then I'm repeating back to them. So I call myself the lazy psychic now because they're <laughs> doing all the work for me, which really they always were because when we say we're right. psychic, how are we psychic? Is it that we're all knowing? Maybe, maybe not, but it's more we're picking that up from their field, their timelines, their past lives, their future lives, their energy field. I believe that's even how psychics that don't use technology read. I think we're reading the frequency broadcast coming off of the person. And, of course, time is non-local. There is no time and space, so we don't need the person to be in front of me. So, yes, you know, there was a time where I had four clinics and I saw clients all day and I did a lot of clinical work and that just gave me a beautiful background and solid foundation for the work I do now but now thankfully my clinic is my office or my living room or my porch or my deck or outside and you know I can do everything through zoom or through email or recording virtually mm, mm, beautiful you know I, I have to admit there was a time in my life where I thought you had, it was important to just focus on one modality or one thing. And then I, I became more conscious and realized that, gee, all of these things, just like you're saying, with your own journey, you accumulate, you know, all this knowledge, this wisdom, different modalities, and and it's a toolbox. And a lot of what you learn, it can be applied to that particular individual. Uh, so it's, it's so, I think it's exciting to know all these different pieces can come together to help that person's life. Um, I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, you mentioned someone might come and, um, and you're utilizing the frequency uh, modality that you have created. And, well, tell us about that because you consulted with an esteemed neurosurgeon. And, and then this uh, frequency, is it, um, is it an instrument or is it more of a modality? It's an app on the phone. So it's an actual... Oh. Um, and I've created a couple of apps and, and, and also then the Halo, which is PEMF, which a lot of people have heard of. But 
Um, it's an app, and I actually no longer use my app. I, I use another one, which is the same thing, but that's a whole another long story. But basically, it's a it's a frequent it's a quantum device, meaning okay. it can, you know, again, no time, no space, all time, all space type of thing. So it can go past, present, future. There's nothing it cannot read. Which really, if we understood who we were, it's the same thing. There's actually no information that is not available to us. We don't need the technology. Where did AI come from? AI came from sentient, you know, what I would call a fire creation being or an eternal being. It didn't, you know, come from itself. It came, you know, from the creative minds of us. So instead of having this really hostile view toward technology, which really even the hostile people toward AI don't actually have, because we're talking on this phone and they're probably listening to, uh, you know, it's black mirror technology, your television's black mirror technology, your computers are black mirror technology, your phones are black mirror, you know, all this technology is actually two-way portal, you know, uh, if you ever watch the show Black Mirror, it explains it very well, but it's all black mirror technology, you know, so we all use it. And then we have the beautiful technology like MRI and, Mm -hmm. you know, CT scans and ultrasounds. And so, this technology that I use is exactly the exact same technology as the medical net technology I was just talking about. However, mm-hmm. the medical field uses it applied very narrowly. We, as quantum healers, apply it, well, and I probably apply it broader than anyone on the planet, but we apply it very broadly. So um, that's just the difference, but it's the exact same technology. Okay. Do you have a lot of people coming with clinical issues or, or um, illnesses, chronic things that they just can't be solved with traditional medicine? I do. Even before I used uh, the handheld technology, I used biofeedback machines that many people have been on. I used I had two mm-hmm. biomeridian, you know, biofeedback machines. And I became known, I don't even know how, you kind of fall into things weirdly, but I became known as the person you take your person to if no one else in the world can help them. And so I started yeah. having people flying in. And I, it always kind of scared me, but I would kind of get in the zone and I would just listen to the body and follow the clues of the body. And there was uh, one story where um, a woman, a mother, young mother, 35 years, had a couple of children, and uh, she was dying, and she didn't have long to live, but she didn't have a diagnosis per se. They didn't know what was wrong with her. Uh, you know, it wasn't cancer. It wasn't these things that, you know, we're so familiar with that are, quote, supposedly, which I don't believe, death sentences. And um, her mom called me up one day, I happened to know her mom, and her mom called me up, and she lived in Pennsylvania, and I was in Ohio at the time, and her mom said, you're going to heal my daughter. And I'm like, uh, no. And she said, yeah, they have her scheduled to, like, cut her open from head to toe in exploratory surgery. I mean, what else do you do in Western medicine? I mean, if you've done all the tests and you can't see anything wrong and the person's dying, it was like a Hail Mary. And she said, before we do that, we're going to bring her to you. So I spent two days with her, and I put her on the machine, you know, for about six hours worth of information. And um, when she went home, we knew, I don't want to disclose her, you know, because I'm under certain things. I don't want to disclose what her diagnosis was because uh, it's kind of personal. But, um, and they asked me not to. But anyway, mm-hmm. we found out the root of the problem. And it was, a, you know how there's those, have you ever watched medical shows where it's like the one out of 100,000 things that are wrong? It was something like that. Just the tiniest little thing. I'll tell you, it was in her intestines. And um, the tiniest part of the body that would just blow your mind, and it was out of whack. And once we knew what it was, then you know how to fix it. If you don't know what's wrong, you can't fix it, right? And that's why I was a big believer in what is and facing what is because everything's up to, you know, easy from there. And so anyway, she went home and, and she's still alive now. And so to be able, I don't believe I healed her at all. Um, I believe, you know, knowing what is wrong, then we can deal with it. it. It could be easy to fix. It could be hard, but at least we knew what was wrong. But was I, you know, a magician or was I a brilliant psychic? No, I didn't use those skills, even though I do mix them a lot with what I do. I didn't use those skills. I used hardcore data clinical information that her mm-hmm. body was giving me to hunt that down. It wasn't a psychic ability or even a medical intuitive ability, which I also have the ability. I could have merged with her and crawled around her body, and I didn't. I literally just went with, you know, the horrible, as people say, AI, and, you mm-hmm. know, and her body and listened, you know, worked with those two entities until we figured out what was wrong. So 
that was very hardcore clinical. And I have a recent story. Um, one of the, the most famous, uh, his name's Robert, most famous psychic in Canada. Uh, I did a scan on him and I said, Robert, you got to get control of your health. He goes, I'm perfectly fine. I said, Robert, you're going to drop dead of a heart attack if you don't take care of yourself. He's like, you're crazy. No way. And so a year went by and he was walking his dogs and he felt a chest pain and he's like, I'm not going to ignore this because Kimberly said, I might have a heart problem and I didn't believe her, but I'm going to call 911. And, and he ended up having a quadruple bypass and he called me and thanked me for saving his life. And so oh, wow. again, was it me? No, it was him. Do we see like everything we need to know is in our energy field, is in our body, is in our memory. And I'm just the helper, the interpreter, you know, the mediator. Yes, yes. And do you find many of the issues are um, tied to emotions or even generational trauma? Oh, yeah, we could go really deep with it. So yes. I've accidentally found out a lot of things, but I, you know, it's so funny, you know, going from this 20-year-old doing exorcism, thinking I knew the be-all and end-all of spirituality and the mind and everything. It's just so funny how we, if we're willing to be open to the evidence and to, you know, listen and learn and change and grow, magic can happen. And That's so right. I've come to find out, kind of like a lot of the spiritual beliefs, we, a lot of things due to entities or timeline enemies or psychic attack or uh, possession or belief systems or ancestral curses or, mm. I mean, I the limit on what I've found in people's fields, not looking for it. Again, just that's the data coming back. And because I've worked with this technology for 30 years, I know it's close to 100%, you know, accurate. I always say I'll put my dog's lives, my kids' lives, and my life on almost every single scan that I put out. It's that accurate. And a lot of times mm. people will say it's not, but I know it is, and I know they're not ready for it. They're, because... I've learned, do you, I mean, I run myself almost every day, and I don't usually like what I see, to be honest with you. It's hard to see that I have a belief that says it's, safe, it's safer to be sick. Who wants to have a belief that it's safer to be sick? I don't, but sometimes right. that comes up as my belief. Right. You know, who wants to believe that they have enemies that wish them harm? But I'd rather know, you know, and I'd rather right. know who they are. And so the sky's the limit with this technology. There is nothing I cannot look at. It's how you program it. So there's a software component, and then there's the hardware component. And so mm -hmm. I'm really good with the software component of it, and I know how to program it. And so I can get any information. So that's led me down some interesting paths. I bet it has. All right. Well, we need to take our first break already. Um, so everyone, don't go away. We'll be back in a few minutes more with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. Experience a different yet profound healing with Reconnective Healing. Includes yet expands beyond any and all known forms of energy healing. The Reconnective Healing Spectrum is comprised of the full healing and evolutionary continuum of energy, light, and information. It allows for healings that are not just physical, not just mental, not just emotional, yet go beyond that to bring healing that includes the evolution of your very being and essence. Deborah Beauvais, trained and certified by world-renowned Dr. Eric Pearl, offers appointment hours at Seacock Family Chiropractic in Seacock, Massachusetts. For questions or to set up both distance or local sessions, call Deborah at 508-431-1959. Again, 508-431-1959. Or go to lovebyintuition.com. That's lovebyintuition.com. Calling all authors. Have you been considering an audiobook? Well, look no further. Come take advantage of Dream Vision 7 Radio Network's unique in-house audiobook production, which includes benefits and bonuses from our radio station. Let our knowledgeable staff guide you to create the audiobook you've always dreamed of without breaking the bank. Check out our full one-stop service from A to Z, including the ACX process. Schedule a free consultation by calling 508-226-1723. That's 508-226-1723. Or go to DreamVision7Radio.com. 
After narrowly surviving the attack on Sandy Hook Elementary, first grade teacher Caitlin Roig DeVellis was left searching for answers that would never come. Eventually, she chose to focus on questions that could be answered. How do I make sure this tragedy doesn't define us? How do we get our control back? Those two questions led her to found the 501c3 nonprofit organization, Classes for Classes. When gifts poured into their classroom, she decided they would help someone else by paying it forward and being kind. This developed into a social network which allows K-8 classrooms to connect so that every student in the United States can learn these crucial lessons. Classes for Classes' mission is to build students' social-emotional intelligence by connecting them to care. All c for c projects are crowdfunded. Any teacher in the U.S. can visit classesforclasses.org. That's classes, the number four, classes.org. Sign up today. Delight your kids with an enchanting journey by reading the Paper Doll Kids Children's Book by Deborah Bove and Janine Sullivan. There's even a catchy tune, Kids for Love Song, produced by Bob Sherwood and sung by kids just like yours. The story weaves around seven paper dolls flying around the world doing good deeds as they bring important attention to our endangered animal friends. There's even a magical ring with a universal message. Kids become interested in service projects, action through compassion, and planting seeds that nurture positive change. The Paper Doll Kids and Kids for Love Song are a production of the Kids for Love Project. Get the book now on Amazon Kindle and the song on CD Baby or iTunes. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. And we are back, and this is a live show. Bob is in the house, and he can take your call, put it right through if you have a question, a comment, or um, something for myself or Dr. Kimberly. It's 833-220-1200, 833-220-1200. The time goes by quickly, so hurry if you want to get in there with a call. Uh, And if you're just tuning in, we are with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. She's an internationally renowned naturopathic doctor, an energy healer, paranormal expert. She has, uh, she's an herbalist as well, and her latest groundbreaking program is Frequency Master, teaching how to master frequencies in your own life and trains other healers to use her own unique and successful methods. To get in touch with um, Dr. Kimberly, go to her site, simply secrettoeverything.com, secrettoeverything.com, just as it sounds. Um, so, Dr. Kimberly, um, people, you know, I, I find that people are more open to all of the magic and the majestic part of our, I mean, that we are majestic, our bodies, but the, just the mystery and the um, magnificence of, of life itself. Uh, do you find that is just accepted now with everyone that you're working with? Or do you think the skepticism that's been out there for hundreds of years, is it still there? And how much, uh, you know, what's the percentage? Do you know even? Is there a way to know? (laughs) Um, By my perception, we as a collective are not in 3D any longer. So people say the veil thinning. I completely disagree. There's never been any veil. The only veil is within ourselves and our belief systems and our not remembering who we are. So as a collective, we've raised to 4.4 we're at right now, 4.4D. We're not in 3D. So that's why, you know, a lot of people, that's why it's acceptable to watch paranormal shows and they became popular because we were at a frequency where we're ready to allow those beings into our field. And that's why the dog man and the Sasquatch and the little people and the fairies are also very, very popular. And I'm talking general population worldwide. Um, you know, maybe 40 years ago, if I said, although I live in the south of the United States and I can still get some religious judgment, that's a little different. But, you know, mm-hmm. usually, like I had a guy come this week uh, to give me a, a gate quote and he said, you know, everybody stalked everybody on the internet now, which is hilarious to me. I didn't know he booked me up, but he looked me up and he goes, 
he goes, you're, he goes, you're a celebrity. And I'm like, in my tiny little niche, maybe, <laughs> but mm-hmm. you know, he was like so impressed and he wanted to talk about the paranormal and he wanted to talk about UFOs and ETs. And that's just some random sales guy coming to my house. So things have definitely changed because there was a time where I would have just said, I design medical technology and sometimes I still do. I kind of read the room um, because I do design medical technology, but you know, and I don't tell them that I live on a habitation site and I have thousands of class A paranormal photography and I, you know, I've done exorcisms and I'm immediate, like I don't go into all that, but I do a lot more now. And I usually get a crowd around me and people asking questions and they're excited. So we're in a different time. And I think it's a very exciting time really. Mm, it is. It's a, on so many levels. It's an exciting time for what you're speaking to, and it's an exciting time for how we are evolving. And hopefully we'll, you know, come, I'd like to see this in my lifetime where, where we're resonating in a high enough frequency that we can come together and mm. realize the, the power of who we are and that we mm. don't have to kill each other. Um, I mean, uh, thousands of right. years, and when are we going to get it that, you know, killing doesn't solve killing, you know, where to come together in, in the love. So that, that's why, you know, the work that I do in the station is all about feeding the collective consciousness and and I call it love consciousness, so that that will rise up and all the heaviness, you know, that's going on will follow, um, will just fall. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are perishing, but it is an exciting time on so many different levels, and um, and we'll see how far we we can evolve <laughs> in the next 20 years or so. Um, it's It's crazy. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I think a lot of, I have compassion for the whole world, including those that would choose, you know, darkness or what we would call evil in this, you know, polarized Mm -hmm. reality. And that's Mm -hmm. because there's so much deception. I think I'm here partly to pull back the curtain, you know, on the Wizard of Oz and say, you've been deceived. I mean, we're all one. I mean, if you are an eternal being, uh, you are one. You're you're of the same material. You know, it's just a different point of view. That's the only difference. But it's the in a different avatar. But that's nothing. That's just the container. But you know, I, I it took me a long time though to be honest ever to get to that. I was a very much an individualist and a rebel and very proud of that. And then to soften into the viewpoint that I can still be an individual, but yet to you know, have concern for the all and to understand my place, I guess, you know, through Mm -hmm. all time and space as part of a collective, it is really interesting. It's a very interesting uh, concept to really try to live out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, One of your questions and I wanted to ask is what ET race are we speaking of what we're sharing right now. What? Please share. That's actually one of my new, yeah, I'm sure you've gone through times in your career where you've focused on different things, you know, and you've been interested in different things and you've kind of you know, wanted to put forth different things. It's actually one of my new main messages. And, and, you know, it's just through a discovery of running many people's fields and looking at their uh, past lives, not just within the game, what we, I call or within earth, but also before they came earth because many of us are trillions zillions zillions it's not even the right word because who knows how old you know we're very very old souls that have you know incarnated in a lot of different um, avatars in a lot of different realms planes timelines ships places of existence some of us have been galaxies some of us have been trees some of us have been beings we've never heard of yet you know Mm -hmm. Um, and what I'm finding is so much interesting stuff regarding that So I used to think, and you'll hear this a lot, not as much anymore, we're starting to get it, but used to be like, I'm Pleiadian, LOL, which is usually not even true. That's just like one of the weird uh, guest races we guess. You know, you're Pleiadian Mm -hmm. or Andromedan or maybe Cetacean or one of these other common races, but it's really not true. What I'm finding is even better. We're not one ET race, any of us. We're soul collective. So, like, I'm a, like a 40 soul collective, and it's not like a pizza. It's not like you slice it up and I'm like 8% this and 20% this and 1% this. 
if I am bringing that full race experience in this avatar, in this body, to this lifetime, and that's what I'm seeing, and maybe it's just that I'm attracting, you know how we attract what we are, I say you cannot attract anything more or less than who you are being at any time, so Mm -hmm. maybe I'm just attracting clients that are soul collective. But I haven't, you know what I have seen? I've seen empty beans, which is a very interesting conversation, probably another three-hour conversation. Yeah. I've seen beans with absolutely nothing in them, or I've seen beans with lower-level consciousness or entities, or some people would call them demons, um, or what we would call negative ET races. I've seen that. Um, and, and I even have family members that are they are absolutely empty. It's like a water bottle, and you drink all the water, and... And what we don't understand about the avatars of the human body that we live in is you can have emotions and be empty. You can mm-hmm. have, you can be intelligent and be empty. Because and when you say it. empty, you mean empty of, well, you Living have to have a soul. soul. Yeah, but you would call soul what I call fire creation, which is the soul. Um, empty, we call them one and done. So if that person empty were to drop dead, that's it. There's nothing to go out of the body and visit you at your bedside or, you know, or touch okay. you with a feather or give you a sign. It's, it's just a body. It's just like, it's like when your blender stops working. <laughs> but what about your spirit? What about the spirit? Yes. Because we are eternal. But you're talking about different. Um, I'm talking, well, then we should get into the whole walk in, walk out. So. Okay. Um, there's a lot of walking in and walking out going in. So if you happen to die when you walk out and nothing's walked in, you're not eternal. There was an eternal being in there that walked out and went somewhere else. Um, but but we're, we're too attached to the blending of, okay, and this is why I learned a lot about this, because my family gets a paycheck for human cloning and transfer of human consciousness. So the soul is like an ocean, and many, many of us have clones. You don't have to be a celebrity to have clones. I have clones. I don't know. I haven't looked at you, and I haven't looked at the database, so I don't know if you have clones. But I know I have clones, um, and many of the people that come to me have clones. And again, those clones can be empty and programmed, literally, like a computer, or you can pour. Our souls are like an infinite ocean. Each one of us. I mean, I tell people go take a measuring cup down to the ocean and take a scoop, and you know, pour it in a bottle, and then. If you have a thousand bottles, you can keep taking a scoop and pouring it in each bottle. Our souls can be infinitely divided. There's no end, you know, to a living soul. And so, and when I mean divided, I mean our unique perspective of being can be divided. So there's a big resistance, and I feel it in you because it's a new concept. But this yes. is where we're at. We're at this yeah, I mean, it may not be a resistance. It may it may just be uh, a time for understanding. If oh, that totally. makes sense, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, totally. And I, and I guess I shouldn't have used the word resistance. I, I guess I, I'm just very sensitive to energy, so I felt your pause and I read the energy of, you yes. know, maybe surprise. I'm not sure what word I would use. But, and that's fine. And, you know, I have people on my podcast because there's different points of view, and I love hearing different points of view. And if I wasn't exposed to different points of view, I wouldn't even be sharing what I'm sharing with you. So I'm just, I just know more of the science because I work with frequency and I work kind of in the hardcore, more cutting-edge science technology area. I've been exposed to some really crazy stuff. And my ex works for Homeland Security, and he worked at Area 51, and he worked in the lab. And he showed – he I shouldn't say that. I don't want to get him in trouble. But I saw triangle ships way, you know, 30 years ago before the government, you know, came out and said the black triangle ships were ours. I knew they were ours because he told me they were ours because he – all them in the hangars, you know, mm-hmm. in Area 51. So I, through my connections and the people I know, I just have kind of weird information, if that makes sense to you. Well, um, I think, you know what I think is, if you're not familiar with it, and I'm not familiar with um, what you're speaking to now, I mean, I've got basic information uh, filed away in my brain, but um, I think it's important to discuss and talk about these things because is it, this is how we learn, this is how we evolve, is listening to things that may not be familiar to us. Um, I, I do want to jump in and say I was, you know, I went to Christian school, Christian college. My dad's a Southern Baptist pastor, so I was raised very, I didn't even used to believe in ETs. I didn't believe in UFOs. I was raised very, very, as you can imagine, mm-hmm. uh, conservatively. And so my experiential evidence 
has led me a lot to these beliefs. You know, I have thousands of hours of UFOs above my house. You know, I have memories and proof of being taken. I mean, it's just hard. You know, I wake up with needle marks and bruises on my body. Like, there's just things that I experience that nobody, you understand this, I know, you're a wise woman, that no one can talk me out of it, even if the whole world, even if there wasn't anyone else that ever said this. I would still know that that's true for me. And one interesting thing about this reality and how the law of manifestation works is everything you believe is real is. So even if that wasn't real, anything I just said, the fact that I believe it is we have these micro worlds, as you know, that we create, and then we have the macro collective consciousness. We have our own timeline, you know, that you can live on and how you order your days and who you interact with. And then we have the collective timeline, and they're not always the same. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the other questions I because I've got my own thoughts and such, but um, sure, sure. the consciousness projection aspects of or splits of the soul. I w- want to hear your um, from your perspective what a split soul is. Oh, and you my know what? Hold that what? thought. I'm oh, I'm sure. uh, I'm okay. in a space right now, and we need to take another break. Okay. Um, so everyone, stay with us. I'm going to throw out the number one more time: eight three three two two zero twelve hundred. More back with Doctor Kimberly McGeorge. Take a journey to a place of the divine love within with Deborah Beauvais on the Love by Intuition Show Monday through Friday at six p.m. and six a.m. Eastern. Our message is love in the purest form. The light within us all is a guide to recall our beginning to learn to love self and humankind, and to feel the higher power of our own divinity. To attract love, one needs to be love. Come join us and step into this glorious vibration called love. Delight your kids with an enchanting journey by reading the Paper Doll Kids Children's Book by Deborah Beauvais and Janine Sullivan. There's even a catchy tune, Kids for Love Song, produced by Bob Sherwood and sung by kids just like yours. The story weaves around seven paper dolls flying around the world doing good deeds as they bring important attention to our endangered animal friends. There's even a magical ring with a universal message. Kids become interested in service projects, action through compassion, and planting seeds that nurture positive change. The Paper Doll Kids and Kids for Love Song are a production of the Kids for Love Project. Get the book now on Amazon Kindle and the song on CD Baby or iTunes. Are miracles real? Can you move from mayhem to miracles? 30 prominent authors say yes as they share their high fives and down lows of challenges, abuse, addiction, and love. Experience hope, the magic elixir of miracles, through the personal stories of New York Times best-selling authors James Redfield, Dr. Bernie Siegel, Sister Jenna, Reverend Temple Hayes, and many more. If you like bestsellers, chaos to clarity, and crappy to happy, you'll love crying and laughing through Mayhem to Miracles, sacred stories of transformational hope, available now on Amazon and in bookstores worldwide. It's a child's job to play, to learn, and to have fun. It's an adult's job to keep them safe. Did you know that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before the age of 18? Every day, families enter the Children's Advocacy Center because a child's courage to tell someone what happened to them. Keeping our children safe starts with a conversation. This is Michelle Aranger, Executive Director of the Children's Advocacy Center. Learn more on how to keep your child safe. Visit CACofBC.org. This message made possible by the Fall River Rotary. Club. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. One more time, I'd like to put out uh, to get in touch with Dr. Kimberly. You can go on her site, secrettoeverything.com, secrettoeverything.com, which is energy, really, right? Energy never lies, as you say, and it's so true. Mm -hmm. Um, But let's um, pick up where we left off, splits of the soul. Please explain. Yeah, I'll try. So um, uh, some people have heard of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever wave. So I believe some people would call it, I call it the all. Some people would call it God or the void or, you know, people have different names for it. But the beginning, I believe that, you know, um, there were groups of, we'll call them souls, 
uh, or oversouls that came out and um, you know wanted to experience less than all possibility, which of course the all, in my opinion, or God, is all possibility. And so they wanted to start restricting themselves for their own experience. Um, you know, you can't oh, yeah. really get married as light color and sound. Like you have to be embodied to hug a puppy, you know what I'm saying, or to watch the sunrise. Like there's just certain things you can't do as other things. You give up as you, you know, you restrict yourself by this shape or the expression of your frequency that you take. And so mm-hmm. we broke out as oversouls. And then these oversouls uh, decided, hey, yeah, this is really great. I love being a universe, but, you know, I want to go down further. I want to be a, an ancient forest or I want to be a tree or I want to I play mm-hmm. a game because I believe, and this is just what I've come to believe, and I'm, as everyone who knows me knows, if I get new information, I change what I believe. But I believe this is, that the Matrix is a documentary and that we're in a simulation game. And so as we get even older and older and older and we split into points of view, and these points of view are happening concurrently. So this isn't a clone situation. This is your soul says, okay, I'm going to split in 12, and one's going to go be an ancient forest, and one's going to go be an alien. I shouldn't even say alien. One's going to go be a certain race on a spaceship, and one's going to go be an old woman living in a cabin in the woods, and one's going to go drink margaritas on a beach and one's going to go fight in a war somewhere you know like different experiences but really we all have a soul frequency and each soul frequency is unique so right now i have hundreds of other parts of me right now in what we would call this moment in other mm-hmm. places other times because all time is now as you know and all dimensions sit on the head of a pin show all these aspects of me and you can actually learn uh which is a whole nother long story. You can learn how to go observe. You can observe as a third party, or you can actually merge because it's you. It's fully you. It, mm-hmm, it makes right. it, It's kind of like a twin. It's kind of like you, but not you having a different experience in a different body mm-hmm. in a different place at a different time. Right, um, right. Thank you for explaining that because that's what I, that's what with all my, in my own world, <laughs> that is. <laughs> Reading and different things. That's what I've come to believe is that. Really? Yeah. Is, okay. I mean, how it could be, how many? I mean, I always say that my late husband could be in Alabama with a family of five. You know, you don't know. Ooh, I it could it, it, wow. any, so cool. all these yeah. splits. Yeah, it makes really? sense to me. I love that. I love, but I love that you even understand that because some people are like, "What?" You know, if that's a new, so that's uh, awesome. It's yeah, not a new but it makes doesn't it make sense though? Because of just when you when you experience something that isn't isn't the norm, as you were saying, you know it's the truth because you've experienced it. And and many people have experienced all kinds of different things, but they might just, you know, say, wait a minute, now that that was a, I imagined that or whatever. Um, but it's not, it's real. And when you experience it a number of times, you just know, again, the mystery and the magic of life and, and what it, and it's just exciting. I may not know, and I'm saying it right, I may not know all that you've explained previous to the, um, what, what you were speaking of before. I can't even <laughs> convey, right. articulate, I can't articulate. Yeah, um, because it's something I don't know. But if I was to delve into that more, I would come to a place of understanding and make my own uh, belief at that time. Because as you said, we keep evolving, so we keep changing our minds. Well, maybe I don't believe this now, but this over here now makes more sense. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. And I, I have these, when I teach classes, they like it when I teach these classes and I and I say I'm going to recant something today and one of the things I actually just recanted was I used to teach that if you raise your frequency high enough you're not going to get jumped you're not going to get attacked you're not going to get possessed you're not going to have entities you know I'm like you know raise your frequency raise your frequency and then I came to the obvious realization if you really think about it because I you know I just said the phrase to you you cannot attract anything more or less than who you're being any time so as you expect Expand your field as you raise your frequency. Guess what? You get to attract even more things, not less things. So, mm-hmm. um, not that you don't have more power and more wisdom. I'm not saying that, but or you know more defense. But 
still I'm like, oh, well, I have to recant on that because that was just dumb. <laughs> you know, that I didn't see that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's fun, too, to learn other things and, and just question. I think it's so important to question everything we believe, question everything out there. Just That's question I it. I say, yeah. uh, no matter what anyone says, including me, you know, people say, you know, there's a war in Iran right now. I would say, who says? I always tell people, if you don't have someone over there in Iran right now, in front of that war that you would trust with your life, you don't know that it's true. You see all the green screen stuff they do and all the scripted. One of my favorite stories is, well, it's an American story. There's this girl, Gabby, and it was a big story for like months and months, a distraction script story where she got kidnapped by her fiance in the national parks and there's a big man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Married. Well, again, my fiance works for Homeland Security. <laughs> he says, don't watch. And if you watch some of the YouTubes from of like the highway patrolman pulling over and talking to her with a new eye, you'll see it clearly, what I'm going to say, uh, once you have a new eye, because it's bad acting. But if that was an interagency exercise, none of that's true. None of that happened. None of that was real. It was an FBI, Homeland, the CIA, et cetera, et cetera, interagency exercise. That's what they, that's the official agency term for it. In reality, I know it as a distraction script. You know, and so mm -hmm. how many people believe that was real? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. That's uh, why we should agree with you. We should question everything. What you say, what I say, what anyone says. Really, I, I think it is about remembering our memories and who we are and how we fit into. But I also think we need to understand where we are and then where where is where we are. How does that fit into all time, all space? These are the big questions that we've been blocked from and we've been programmed against. And mm -hmm. they don't want us like now, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and even the thought of all the all these hundreds of years with with whether there's UFOs or not or whether there's life beneath us and all of that. It's it's just it just seems so impossible to think that we're the only species here, um, and, and there's nothing else. And for anyone that believes that, um, that's where they are right now. And maybe they'll change their their mind as we go along. I don't know, but it's it's um, there's, there's so much to to consider, to ponder, to. Just shift and sift. I mean, uh, yeah. But we're we're um we're coming to the end of our time, and I wanted to find out if you want to share with the listeners. Do you have an event coming up? Um, how can people get in touch with you other than uh, your sure. website? Yeah. Um, well, they're welcome to write support at kimberlymcgeorge.com. dot com. That feeds into secret to everything dot com. But that's my staff. And there is a information form you can fill out also on the website to get a hold of me if you go there. Uh, we do have two live events coming up, one in September, end of September, one in, in October. One is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and one is outside of Charlotte, North Carolina in October. And so you can, there's information about that. Um, we're actually talking, well, the theme is uh, the light through all time, and the goal is expansion of your being and helping you remember who you are, hopefully, during that weekend, we're going to be doing some body work and some other really fun stuff. So, yeah, that's coming up. I have a monthly group uh, where I teach and I do processes and activations, and you can ask questions. It's called Ultimate Evolution, and that's also on my website. So, yeah, you'll just have to – and you can buy a scan. There's scan. You can just dig around my website if anyone's interested. But I, I thank you very much for having me on. Oh, thank you. It's been a joy, and it's been fun, and, and every, it's been everything. So I, I thank you for that, Dr. Kimberly. Um, with the couple of minutes that we have left, what would you like to leave the listeners with? I'm going to kind of dial it back to some really simple things. You mentioned one of them. I really encourage um, putting, taking off that, um, you know, we've been programmed to wear shoes, I believe, taking off your shoes and going barefoot as much as possible. And there's just such a grounding into the body in that. And where we've been deceived a lot of the time, I think, is going out of the body. And really, mm -hmm. we find out that we need to stay in the body to remember who we are and to you know, have right. the power of the body to be a great asset to us, as you know. And um, when we run scans, I've run scans with thousands of people, one thing that is consistent is, and you already said this too, I'm going to say it in a little different way, is you know, that those requesting 
you know, four to six hours of alone silent time a week. And I haven't mm-hmm. even programmed it with any more because I'm afraid what it's going to say we need more and who even has four to six hours. <laughs> but it also requests 10 hours in nature a week. Whoa. And I'm afraid to program anything else in and bounce it off people's fields because, again, I'm afraid because I'm not, I live in nature and I don't even spend 10 hours in nature, you know, really mm-hmm. in nature, you know. Um, so it's simple things. You don't have to buy a skin for me. You can really all the answers. And I know you've heard people say this and it sounds trite, but it's not like that silence, you know, the energy going from your heart line, the center of your being, your soul directly to the all, that's everything. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of assistance like you and me and tools and healing and et cetera and technology. And there's lots of help, but ultimately like, that's the old school. That's how the most powerful men and women of all ages have done it. They've gone off in the cave, right? They've gone up on a mountain. They've gone into the dark and they've sat and they've listened. We don't mm-hmm. listen. Mm-hmm. And, and then I want to just encourage everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. If you resonate with anything we talked about or any aspect, you are a fire creation spirit. You are an old, 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 wise, powerful. You are who these Marvel comics are written about and these superhero movies are done, you know, they base that on us. You are so much more than you think. And, Mm -hmm. you know, starting to remember that is just magic. It's balm to the soul. And then holding that within you and letting it change how you relate to people and change how you make choices. And you learn you're a powerful creator and you can win the game of life, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, by doing some of these simple things. My beautiful, beautiful, and a beautiful way to end the show. I thank you so much for your wisdom and your magic and and just your knowledge and all that you're doing to serve others. So I thank you for that, Dr. Kimberly. And, and you every- too. You too. Thank you for this show. You're doing quite a bit. Thank you. Thank you. And for everyone out there listening, listen again. Pick up something else the second time. Share it with your family and friends and let everyone know about Dream Vision 7 Radio Network until we come together again, soul to soul. Au revoir. Are you seeking a clearer path to love? Then tune in to the Love by Intuition show next week. All designed to your highest good. To contact Deborah Buffet, owner of Empowered Connections, call her at 508-226-1723. That's 508-226-1723. Or link on to lovebyintuition.com. Remember, we are all one, and we are all part of the miracle of love. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.